Hi, it's the Irish Gypsy here to bring you your April 2016 mid-month reading. I am still using the Gilded Tarot deck, and even though we are focusing more on the last half of the month and the month entire, I'm still using the same eight-card spread with an additional ninth card as your overall theme and general feeling advice over the reading. These are general readings, so please be aware of that. And if they don't resonate or apply and make absolutely no sense to you whatsoever, um, I suggest you check your uh, rising and your moon sign as well. Um, your sun sign, your rising, and your moon sign as well. All three of them actually every month to give as definitive a look as possible. Uh, there are some months and some readings where um, your other sign will um, resonate for you in a more predictive way. So just make sure to check all three each month. Thank you to those of you who continue to watch and listen and subscribe to my channel. Uh, your feedback and comments are so very important to me, and I can't tell you how much I enjoy reading them. Please keep them coming. Uh, I love to read them, even if I don't respond to all of them. I do read all of them, uh, both the ones on my channel and the ones you send through email. So keep those coming, and thank you so very much for adding and helping to make the community grow. I very much appreciate it. And thank you always to those of you who continue to reach out for personal one-on-one -on -one readings. Thank you so much for the honor and the opportunity to read for you. And for those of you who are interested in a one-on-one -on -one reading with me, you can click on the About sign on my channel's homepage, and that will give you a little bit more information and my contact details. And you can email me directly at maggie, the number one, mcguire at gmail.com. I do readings full-time. So I work pretty diligently with your schedule to get you readings as quickly as possible. My current turnaround time is about one to four or five days. So let's get into this. <clears throat> this reading is for Libra for April 2016, mid-month. Libra, April 2016, mid-month. What does the remainder of April hold? for our lovely, beautiful Librans. April 2016, mid-month. Libra, Libra, Libra. April 2016, mid-month. Okay. <clears throat> we begin with the Ten of Pentacles, followed by the Nine of Wands, the Queen of Swords, followed by the Hermit, the Queen of Pentacles, followed by the Knight of Cups, the Six of Swords, followed by the Four of Pentacles in reverse, and as your crowning card, general theme, feeling, and advice for the month, the card from the bottom of the deck is the Seven of Pentacles. So let's take a look, Libra. Okay, let's begin. Sorry about that, Libra. <laughs> Just getting the last bits of it. <clears throat> okay, we find ourselves in the middle of April with the Ten of Pentacles, followed by the Nine of Wands. So, Ten of Pentacles. Pentacles is ruled by the element of Earth. So Pentacles is all about uh, is all about things in our earthly, tangible, material environment. Typically, things we can see and touch and feel, and most often it points to things like money, finances, property, resources, assets, etc. So I'm sorry, Libra. It's interesting. I keep getting um, kind of bits and pieces and flashes as I continue to hold the cards. And I was looking to see at your um, division of suits here to see if it points towards anything in particular. Um, 
lots of reflection and assessment, thoughts and ideas, taking some time out this month and moving on from something. For some of you, I think this is going to represent as a career direction, um, something of that sort. <clears throat> So the Ten of Pentacles tend to represent the ends of cycles too. Uh, the suit of Pentacles can often refer to like money, jobs, resources, property, jobs, assets. And I think perhaps for a larger portion of you, this reading is going to represent um, something in your tangible world if it's not an actual job, perhaps a career path, a project of some kind, your own business, an entrepreneurial um, sort of thing. Tens representing um, the ends of cycles, the culmination of something, the coming full circle of something. The Ten of Pentacles is a card of uh, financial success or some other kind of material, tangible success, abundance, and prosperity, but in a step-by-step -step kind of longevity sort of thing. If you were, for example, beginning a business and you wanted to pull one card to represent what the health and longevity of the business was going to look like and you pulled the Ten of Pentacles, it's a very good card. It speaks of uh, prosperity, success, abundance. Uh, but in a step-by-step -step longevity sort of way, building up the foundation of something that's going to last for quite a long time. There's also an added benefit of this of family attached to this as well, representing that not only is this going to represent prosperity and abundance for you, but that it's going to benefit your family somehow, your family circle, or those closest to you that you love and care for and perhaps support. This represents a foundation that's going to carry through for quite a long time and in uh, a business finance reading. This could also represent family money, family business, family estate. Now this is paired with the Nine of Wands. Wands is governed by the element of fire and air, a very dynamic combination. And the suit of Wands is a pretty, for the most part, very action-oriented suit. It's all about change, movement, action, power, um, momentum. The Nine of Wands is a card that points towards um, a temporary setback or a temporary defeat of some kind. And it speaks of taking a time out to try and figure it out and re-strategize. This is a card that points more to a withdrawal rather than a full-blown retreat. You can see that um, this man is sunk down on his knees in the grass, holding on to this ninth wand as if it's the only thing holding him up. And behind him in the background, you can see this cluster of eight wands, which represents an obstacle he's run into, a setback. And this is an unexpected thing. He wasn't expecting this. And he has, he's confused by it. He's taken a step back. He's kind of sunk down going, what happened? What went wrong? Did I do something wrong? How can I fix this? Do I need to go through it? Do I need to go around it? Do I need to find another way? Um, this is a card of figuring it out, um, trying to figure out if you did something wrong and what and how to get around it or get through this unexpected setback or obstacle. Uh, the point being that this man will at some point go back into it or make a decision not to. Um, again, a card of a temporary running into a, an unexpected roadblock, an unexpected obstacle of some kind. And it's attached with the Ten of Pentacles, Libra. So what it looks like is around the middle of April 2016 and possibly even before. This is carryover, could be carryover energy too. You had been, it, it looks like you had been working on something and building up a foundation of something. I think for a large portion of you, this is going to be material world related somehow, a job, a career path perhaps, um, uh, a family business, your own business, an entrepreneurial um, financial project of some kind, creative project. And you've been working on it for quite some time and you were working on building up a foundation, wanting to build a foundation of something that was going to last for quite a long time and perhaps uh, benefit your family as well. This could also represent um, a family business investing in for quite some time, working on building up a family business, the foundation for something that's, again, going to last for quite a long time. And you've run into an obstacle, some kind of unexpected setback, delay, uh, failure, problems, something like that. And this combination of cards, particularly with the Nine of Wands, speaks of taking a time back, taking a step back, and trying to figure out what happened, what went wrong. And it looks like you were really thrown by this thing. Um, again, for I think the larger portion of you, this it feels like something in your tangible material world, job, career, uh, property, a family home, a family business, perhaps some kind of entrepreneurial thing, a career path that you've been working, you know, you've, you've invested quite a bit of yourself in. 
Now, right next to that, we have the Queen of Swords, which I'm feeling is resonating as your energy, as the air sign that you are. Uh, the Queen of Swords, swords being governed by the element of the air, which is you. Um, and so the suit of swords is all about our words and ideas. It's about our mindset, our perspective, how we think, how we look at things, our belief system. It's all about what goes on up here. And the queen of swords, the energy of the queen of swords, the personality of the queen of swords, she is a truth seeker. This is somebody very intelligent. This is somebody very truthful, very fair, very just. Uh, she's also a very cerebral person. She can sometimes come across to people as a bit emotionally detached or withdrawn. Uh, she's not really, not necessarily, particularly not in the upright position. This is just inherently who she is. Very thoughtful, methodical person, prone to make decisions and come from a place of the mind before the heart. Um, someone who considers everything. Someone also very eager to continue learning and building up information, always seeking the truth, always seeking knowledge, very clear thinking, insightful sort of individual. Um, if you wanted to know the absolute truth about something, this would be the good person to go to. And I feel like this is resonating as your energy, Libra. Now, the Queen of Swords is paired with the Hermit card. The Hermit card being a major arcana card. And I feel, Libra, that whatever snag or setback or unexpected thing that you run into, that looks like it really kind of threw you for a loop. Um, it looks like the advice for you, and I'm feeling that this is specifically advice attached to you, to your energy, advice of the hermit. The hermit speaks of, again, and it's right next to that nine of swords, taking a step back and going within, actually, and using not only your own beautiful energies of seeking the truth, of fact-finding, information-finding, um, gathering everything that you can, looking at the situation with an impartial view, using your own, the own positive manifestations of the positive aspects of your air energy combined with the hermit to kind of figure out how to walk through this, how to deal with this thing or what decision to make. The hermit speaks of using a lifetime's culmination or your lifetime so far, culmination of wisdom and knowledge, experience, trial and error, success, defeats, failures, triumphs, and using all of that, going within, seeking out all that wisdom and intuition and your own gut instinct and to, to know how to walk through this thing, as is uh, symbolized by the image on this card, this uh, older aged man walking across this precipice. And he's depicted as older because we typically view older people as having a little more wisdom and insight because they've simply had more life experience. And he's using the light of this lantern to guide his way slowly, carefully, thoughtfully, methodically, uh, from one side to the other. And the light of that wisdom is, is symbolic for the culmination of his life experience, all the experience, trial and error, everything that he's learned. He's got garnered all this wisdom now. He's reached a place in his life where he's using all of that to guide his way, to guide his path. It speaks of taking a time back, perhaps withdrawing, taking a, a very logical and practical and as impartial a view as possible of the situation in order to find out the truth and find out how to walk through it and what decisions to make around it. And it's interesting because your crowning card is a seven of pentacles, which is a reflection and assessment card as well. And it looks like you're going to have some help in doing that. Um, there's also a secondary uh, piece of advice to the hermit too. Of if there's anyone in your life that holds any kind of position like this, they would be a good person to seek advice from. But it does look like you're going to have help and support during this uh, because right next to that we have the Queen of Pentacles and the Knight of Cups. And I'm reading the Queen of Pentacles specifically as, an, as a separate individual uh, in your life, in your situation, or if they're not already currently in your sphere, they're going to be coming into your sphere along with the Knight of Cups. Uh, for some of you, this is going to resonate as two different people. For some of you, this is going to resonate as the energy of the Knight of Cups is what the Queen of Pentacles is bringing to you. But we have the Queen of Pentacles paired with the Knight of Cups. So the Queen of Pentacles, another queen, again, a mature, reflective person, someone who's reached the mastery of her suit, just like you've reached the mastery of yours as the Queen of Swords. The culmination of all the beautiful aspects of the suit of swords, words and ideas. The Queen of Pentacles has reached the master of her suit, which is the suit of pentacles. 
that lovely earthly energy. She is, um, she is one of those, the energy and the personality of the Queen of Pentacles, she's just one of those people who's, uh, you know, she could be one of those people who uh, works a full-time job, does a beautiful job at it, runs her home beautifully, uh, keeps her kids on schedule, keeps her husband fed, all the laundry's done, the house is always looking good, the roses are always trimmed. She kind of does it all and makes it look effortless. She's also a wonderfully solid source of support, very reliable, very dependable, very loving, um, beautiful maternal energy, um, very supportive. And I'm feeling this as a person, if they're not currently in your sphere, it looks like they're going to be coming into your sphere or someone that you're able to reach out to that's going to be a source of support and help and stability throughout this process, not only in uh, just being a source of support and perhaps consolation and this snag or this unexpected block that you've run into or obstacle um, or even perhaps failure of a business or difficulty in that. Uh, a great source of support for you during this. And she is also paired with, um, this is a, she's a very loving, nurturing person too. And I really feel like she's going to be there as a source of support and that you need to, if you know who this is, you need to reach out to this person um, as a source of support. And she is paired with the Knight of Cups. Now, for some of you, this is simply going to resonate as the energies that she is bringing in with you, which is to offer the support, offer the love. Um, knights are the bringers of the tarot, and this would represent somebody coming in and offering their suit. And this is the suit of cups, which is all about love, relationships emotions, feelings. Cups is governed by the element of water. So cups is a suit that is all about emotions, feelings, um, our inner emotional landscape and atmosphere, um, love and relationships. And knights bringing the, are the bringers of the tarot deck. And this would be somebody who's coming in to bring you, offer you love, offer you a source of emotional support, for some of you, this is going to resonate as two people who are in your life or there for you to access in your life as a source of support in helping you through this, uh, Libra. And if so, this Queen of Pentacles could be represented by an actual earth sign, which is Taurus, Virgo, or Capricorn, or somebody who strongly manifests the same energies and personality traits of the Queen of Pentacles. For those of you for whom this is going to resonate as two people offering you support, this Knight of Cups could resonate as a water sign person, which would be Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio, or someone who strongly manifests the character traits of the Knight of Cups. However it resonates for you, whether this is one Queen of Pentacles, which could also be your mother or someone in place of that maternal figure, bringing you this emotional support, this love, uh, this nurturing energy, or it could be, again, two separate people. Uh, perhaps two family members or your mother and a friend, something of that sort. But it looks like a really, really good source of support for you. And a very important source of support for you, too. And sometimes, uh, Libra, as an air sign, particularly as that queen of swords, sometimes um, it is a challenge for air signs who tend to be or come across as impartial. Um, it may be sometimes a challenge for you to reach out for emotional support from other people, but these cards strongly indicate that it is there for you to help you kind of figure this thing out and provide you the emotional support that you need while you're kind of um, fact-gathering, looking at it, um, figuring out what to do, and trying to make decisions about it. Looks like you have a lot of support available to you. Now, at or towards the end of April 2016, we have the Six of Swords accompanied by Four of Pentacles in reverse. So the Six of Swords, again, that air energy, words, ideas, mindset, perspective, how we look at things. The Six of Swords is a card of well, basically sailing from smooth and troubled waters, from smooth and troubled uh, waters into, sorry, <laughs> from troubled, turbulent waters into, more, into smooth and more peaceful waters. It's late and I've been doing readings all day. I apologize. But don't worry, the energies are still flowing well. In other tarot decks, I've actually seen the water behind the boat be very choppy and wavy, and the water in front of the boat being very smooth and placid. It has kind of a, this card has kind of a quiet, somber uh, feeling to it. And I, and I kind of get a little bit of that feeling of just reading entirely. Not bad, not negative, just kind of a, kind of a quiet, um, almost poignant sort of feeling about it. Um, 
The Six of Swords uh, has a, a very strong theme of peace and healing and restoration. You're moving through and away from something, it looks like, by the end of April 2016 or at the end of April and moving into May. It looks like you're going to be moving through and away from this thing, I think aided greatly by this one or two sources of support and, and your own decision-making abilities as you take a step back and kind of look and figure this thing out. It looks like you're going to be moving through and away from it. And whether that's um, fixing what currently went wrong, doing it a different way, or moving through through it and away from it entirely, however it's going to resonate for you, it looks like at the end of April 2016 and moving into May, you're going to be, it's going to be easing up for you. You're going to be um, moving into a quieter, smoother, more peaceful time. There's almost a feeling of heartache about it, but not in a very strong, like, dagger stabbing kind of way it's just it's a healing process you're moving away from something there's still some residual disappointment some hurt but you're moving away from it this is healing restoration peace moving away from troubled turbulent chaotic times in whatever this was and into smoother times and letting go and again i'm feeling quite strongly that these two people or this one person that's um, offering so much love and support is going to be a key factor in helping you in this moving through and away process and letting go. That Six of Swords is also paired with the Four of Pentacles in reverse. So in the upright position, Pentacles, again, we have that tangible earth energy. In the upright position, the Four of Pentacles represent actually holding on, holding on very tightly. It can also represent um, kind of holding on so tightly, being very guarded, very closed off. I see this card come up sometimes in personal readings for people who've actually lost quite a bit, and so they have a tendency to hold on very tightly to what they have left because they're afraid of losing it, uh, not willing to open up, to let go, to share, because they're afraid of, you know, they've been hurt or they've lost a lot, and they're afraid of losing what they have left. It's a card of holding on and holding on very tightly, which can put us in a very, um, we do it to make ourselves feel safe, but it can also be very restrictive um, in our own personal growth as human beings. But you got it, Libra, in the reverse position, which I actually like to see for you in this reading, particularly paired with the Six of Swords, because it represents opening up, it represents letting go, it represents saying, okay, I'm moving through and away from this thing, and I'm, I'm moving into better times, quieter times, peace, restoration, and healing. So just a quick recap. I have just kind of a, almost a, not exactly sad, but just kind of a, looks like this was a challenge, an unexpected thing you ran into, um, something that you had been putting a lot of energy into or building up, really building up a foundation. You ran into some kind of unexpected challenge, obstacle, defeat, failure of some kind. The cards point to needing to take a step back, looking at it very clear-headedly, using uh, the manifestations of the positive aspects of the air energy that you already possess being a Libra, being the hermit, using those energies, figuring it out. Looks like you're going to have a lot of emotional support offered to you and available to you for you to reach out and take. And that's going to help you um, at or towards the end of April 2016 and moving into May too, I feel as well, to move through this thing. Again, whether it's in a fixing it mode or in just moving and transitioning away from it entirely, letting go, opening up, moving through and away from it. Looks like uh, strongly a month of consideration, reflection, um, taking it apart, figuring it out, um, reflection and assessment, which is echoed also in your crowning card, which is the Seven of Pentacles, which is a card of reflection and assessment and wondering if something is worth to continuing investing in. You can see on this card that it is harvest time. This woman has planted her seed. She's invested everything it took to grow this tree to fruition. The fruits are grown, they're ripe, they're ready to be picked. There's a ladder leading up next to it so she can climb up there and she has a basket to put the fruits in, symbolized by the pentacles. Uh, but she hasn't climbed up there yet and the basket is empty because she hasn't begun the harvest yet. She hasn't begun to pick. She's kind of taking a look at what's grown and she's asking herself, uh, is it worth it? Did I get what I anticipated getting? Did I get what I invested back and more. Is it worth continuing in? Should I pick these and move on? Um, should I take what I have and go? Should I take what I have and keep investing in this thing and hope that the yield is better next year or next growing cycle? This is a card of reflection and assessment. It doesn't point to a decision making one way or the other. 
it's going to be up to you through this process and the help that you that it's available to you to make that decision. But it looks like at least for the remainder of April 2016, Libra, it's going to be about reflecting, assessing, taking it apart, looking at the pieces, uh, probably fairly impartially, using your experience and your own intuition to make a decision. Again, there's help available there, beautiful help available there for you, uh, both offered to you and there for you to, to reach out and take. And I would strongly encourage you to do that because it looks, again, like it's going to be a key factor in helping you open up, uh, let go, and move through and away from uh, this thing in whatever way that means, whether away from it um, or fixing it and moving on or taking what's there and moving on as well. So Libra, I hope you have enjoyed this reading. I hope it has brought you some wisdom and insight and clarity and some food for thought on perhaps um, how to proceed through this thing. It looks like you're going to be moving um, into a smoother and more peaceful time at the end of it, and I'm happy to see that for you. So thank you for watching Libra, and if any of you are interested in a personal one-on-one -on -one reading with me, you can click on the About sign on my channel's homepage for more information, and you can contact me directly at Maggie, the number one McGuire, at gmail.com, and I would be delighted to work with you. And until I see you again in a couple of weeks for the May 2016 general readings, I wish you, as always, joy, peace, blessings, and a happy life. Thanks for watching, Libra, and I'll see you soon. Bye.